Welcome back to another season of Seven's Book Discussions. First quarter, winter, winter. Kicking it off with Poppy War. Part one of Poppy <laughs> War. Yep. So, how do you feel about the uh, opening of this uh, whole story here? Um, well, it's a lot of setup. I feel kind of like getting you familiar with things. And she's doing it in the way where the main character is a student. Mm -hmm. So you're learning about the world as she's learning about the world. Mm -hmm. And other than that, you're also learning about the world by how other characters are treating the character. Right. And the main character's name is... Runin? Runin. Or Rin? Rin. And she's, it's not just any old school that she's a student at. Well, she had to work really hard, basically kind of like torturing herself to stay awake. To take the test. Yeah. But, well, let's, you know, I mean, if you've, well, if you've read the book, which we hope you are reading it with us, <laughs> uh, you know that it's like, um, I don't want to call it a military school, but. It is. Yeah, it is. but they offer more than just military studies. Well, so yes. But the focus is military? Well, the one-off lore, most people think it's just a joke anyway. Right. But it's got some... Well, everything else is kind of like a military application. Well, and the lore's got, like, history... Of military stuff. But no one takes it serious. Right. Well, I mean, if you know the instructor, I say Jiang, I'm probably saying it wrong. I just say Jiang. Well, he's... (laughs) I would like to say... (laughs) He's a poppy head. He's a little bit of a druggie. A little bit, you know. Feeling uh, a little hippie. Yeah. I do, yeah, I, I, the hippy dippiness is there. I guess the idea is graduates of this school go on to be members of the nation's military. They basically become career commanders, generals. So is it like a West Point? You could say that. Okay. So this, well, at least the first part is her journey in this, this... Is her journey in this... She goes from basically not even human level rights character, Mm -hmm. because she's a war orphan, Mm -hmm. to being a second year at this school. Right. That's what part one's about. And she passed the trial to remain at the school. Right, and she pledged lore. She pledged lore. With the hippie. Okay, so what are the five... Is it five... Well, what we talk about? No, no, no. The five options of study. Is it five or four? I think lore makes it five. Okay, so it's... it's combat, mm -hmm. medic, strategy, and... Maybe lore does make it four. No, there's another one. I just can't remember what he is. Combat, medic, strategy, lore. Is there a fifth one? Yeah. Well, anyways, out of the four that we could remember, <laughs> if you found yourself in lore, the, you didn't even let me finish the question. And no, lore, that's my choice. Listen. <laughs> and he only takes one student at a time. No, he stated before he had multiple students, but they yeah, both. Yeah, it didn't work out so well. So now he focuses on like one. Because remember, he had the, the multiples, and then he took on Alton, who's like the god of the academy. But that didn't work out, apparently, either. Well, you know, red tape from the Empress. Yeah. So you would pick lore. Mm-hmm. So what is lore? So, basically, <clears throat> you learn history that you're... Oh, I think history was probably part of... Anyway... That might have been the other subject. Mm, mm, but mm. Um, you learn a different part of the history and about shamans and what they can do. Right. And so if history is 
one of the options. I mean, I enjoy history, so, you know, I would have probably gravitated towards that. But for some reason lately, I feel like I want to, like, know more on, like, the spiritual enlightenment it's a very, mysticism. Right. So that's why I feel like I gravitate towards lore. Well, the way she is writing her magic system is very unique to this world, I feel. Because mm -hmm. shamans basically use the drugs to commune with the gods. Mm -hmm. And that's, they borrow the power from the gods and that's how they achieve whatever they're achieving. Right. Which, at the end of this first part, I keep wanting to say Ven because of Mistborn, but it's Ren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ren actually gets to have an enlightenment experience. With a road bump, but mm -hmm. because a woman greeted her and tried to block her way. Right. But we'll get into that more later. Right. Um, I was going to say something with her enlightening. Oh, so, but yes, yeah, so, but... Like, according to her professor, she's pretty much met what he had. I mean, he has stuff to teach her, but she's finally hit. He the, wanted her to be stable. Right. But she's like, okay, but I want to know more about this power, which she channeled during a uh, epic. Was it? Before it was the, the trial final fight. or during the trial? It was the final fight. In the trial against, uh, what's his name? Nezha. Mm -hmm. Or however you say it. I don't like that arrogant prick. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> she channeled some power and she was like on fire. She was literally seeing red. There's that then, Chevelle again. <laughs> so she, after winning her bout, she runs to Jiang and he's like, you're burning up. Mm -hmm. And he quiets the god in her. And that's when he realizes that she is something to consider. Because all, all the other professors were like not wanting anything to do with her. Because she is some little peasant well, girl. Well, strategy managed. did. Well, strategy did, yes. But she got kicked out of her martial arts. Combat, yes. Um... The medic thing? Was she even doing anything She didn't like want that? nothing to do with it. Yeah. Because it's, it's extra classes on top of what you're already yeah, doing. Yeah, but nobody really likes her because she is, it's the whole... Well, she has one true friend. Kate. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, as far as, like, I mean, the strategy professor does care for, likes her, but not, like, I think Jiang likes her more. Because she is this, she comes from this bottom of the barrel area, and they're all like, oh, the only reason you're here is because the Academy wants diversification. That made me think of something. What is it? It's an actual thing. What is it? It's with the schools. Jurisdiction? No, 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 no. Where you want to have a different variety of people. I don't know. It'll come to me probably later Diversity? On. N yes, but no. There's like... And some people like it, it... I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of it right now. Anyways. But it made me think of that. The word I can't think of right now. Um, so anyways. So then when she gets to the trial, because, you know, she's had to it's work like a, extra hard because nobody wants to help her out. It's like a blood vendetta between mm -hmm. her and... Nez, yeah, but she kicks his bum. It was a close thing, though, really. Because mm -hmm. he was very tough. Yeah. So. Because he's got, like, basically royal heritage, you could say. Right. Um. So, yeah, there's definitely the theme of class in this book. Yes, there is definitely, you could say, racism, class... Uh, you could call this an underdog story. Um, I personally, second time reading it, I still get emotionally invested to back her no matter what she's doing, even if it's horrible for some reason. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's just, she basically becomes 
No spoilers. No, no, no. Like part one only. She becomes so <laughs> focused on her tasks that she like literally destroys her womb. <laughs> oh yes. So yeah, because you know she is female. She gets a monthly visitor from a monthly visit from Aunt Flo, which she has her first experience at, at the, the academy, and she's like, "Oh my gosh." I'm bleeding from places I shouldn't be bleeding. And she runs to the medics. <laughs> and apparently they have some, like, potion. I don't even want to call it. It's, a, I don't know. Like a they, tonic. It's a concoction that if you take it, you essentially, I guess, dissolve your womb, all your girly parts. So she suffers for, like, a couple weeks between the first period pains and then getting rid of her womb. <laughs> Yeah, and now she's only, like, what, 15 or 16 in this? Right around there. So, she's, yeah. Made a very big, big decision. decision early on in life. And now, so I was thinking, because, you know, I am a girl. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, sorry to interrupt, but, like, that kind of decision right there shows you that she's not exactly stable when she puts her mind to something. Like, she just wants the end result, F everything else. Well, also, because her options. If she doesn't succeed here, she goes back to her podunk town and has to marry some guy who's, like, twice her age. Yeah. And he's going to expect her to have kids. So she has to make this work. This is, like, her one and final chance to get the hell out of Dodge. For someone of her status... Which is, you know, she doesn't even have any family officially. Right. And she definitely doesn't meet, like, the beauty standards because her skin's darker than everyone, everyone else's. Else. Yep. This is, like, her one shot. Mm-hmm. At becoming more than just, I don't know, whatever she would become back in her hometown. And I'd say the character work is good enough because you legit get mad at some of these people for their treatment yeah well let me go back now first of all we were talking about the whole oh, sorry you could not have a period for the rest of your life now you do not understand i don't i do and i'm thinking hmm would i have done that <laughs> <laughs> if i had to make the decision while i was on the rag it might have happened <laughs> <laughs> but and I'm sure there are other women out there who would agree that oh hell yes well but I mean not everyone women or man wants to have a child so right if you know that from a young age yeah but yeah but I was just like man that's that's quite a big decision to make at that age and it was a snap decision really and it was like yeah she didn't put any thought into it she's like I don't have to experience this ever again let's do it because she was thinking every time this happened, she's going to get further behind in the classes. Right. Because, yeah, she, before she knew about the concoction, she had already missed some classes because of it. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, so yes. Um, back to what you were saying about you get mad at the people as to how they treat others. Well, that goes with the whole themes of, like, classism, mm-hmm. racism. Her, I think you could kind of say maybe some mental health issues. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And I know uh-huh. you've said in fantasy, that's kind of a, a big theme with a lot of fantasy authors. There are a lot of authors that do explore that one. So, some better than others. But, mm-hmm. yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, go ahead. And at this point, I would say, like, plot-wise, it's been pretty straightforward. So I mean, you know, it's building up to something like because oh, yeah. the near the end of this first part, they start talking more about like the history of where they're located. Which they have, first of all, which this book the author takes like she's writing somewhat based off of real events for some of these some of things. It, yeah. Yes, because there is a mention of the. Um, uh, I don't know the exact wording, but it's like the five frolics. It's an actual thing. Oh, when uh, the moves, he's teaching yeah. her forms? Yeah, yeah. teaching her forms. It, the forms that he's teaching or that she was studying prior to him coming into the picture are real. Are real. I looked them up because I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. 
because I'm thinking it has the words animals in it, and I'm an animal person. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's cool. But then they're talking more about the history of this nation, mm-hmm. empire, empire, and like they have different names. But if you kind of look under the descriptions for the different countries, they could be looked at as references. Could pick, you could see some real nations referenced there. Like you could say, Nakara could be. I think Japan. No. Our, Nakara's China. Sorry. Mm-hmm. What do they reference in here that I think is Japan? Muganese. Ah, that's it. And then there's the hinterlands, which could be. Did we say maybe Russia? It was well, north yeah. and cold, so it could be Russia. And then there's Hesperia, which, which could be like a western, you know. Yeah, it could be Great Britain or even beyond. Because they have a great naval presence, and mm-hmm. yeah. so depending on what era of history you're looking at, that could mean different right. nations. Yeah. So, that's cool. But, as I was saying, as far as you were saying the plot's pretty straightforward, it's clearly building up to some kind of war. I mean, the title has the Poppy War in it. Yeah. But, they are talking about, apparently there has been a Poppy War, to, and a second Poppy War, so... And they barely, Nakara basically barely survived both of those. Right. And I think there, but I think there's things happening outside of Nakara that mm-hmm. would lead me to believe that we're working our way towards another war. I mean, she's in a military school. So, they're prepping for something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not a lot of uh, foreshadowing needed there. I know we're heading somewhere that's going to be militaristic and war. Well, and I will say, even though you know, it's obviously got militaristic things, I mm-hmm. would not call this a military fantasy. Okay, what would you call it? Um, just a fantasy. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it. It does get grim darky. Okay. So you could call it a grim dark fantasy, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't call it militaristic, even though you know you got military aspects. Okay. Because that's not really the overall focus. So what would you say the overall focus is, if you can say without revealing too much? I mean, is it just her journey? From peon to whatever lies ahead? It is the story of her life. Okay. Basically, and how she deals with events and damage to her. Okay. Now, other than Rin, who I think you said you like the most, she's the main character. Well, I mean... I'm not saying I like her the most because she's not exactly likable, but I empathize with her. Okay. Who, I mean, out of who we've met, who, you already said you'd pledge lore, so we know you'd be working with Jiang. That's my favorite. He's your favorite character. Oh, okay. I can't go into why. Because it would reel. Okay. Um... I think I do I do like Jiang a lot. I do. Her, the main character, Ren, I mean, I think I'm with you. Like I get it. You know As long as you can have empathy for her, you can probably get through the story. It's when you lose empathy for her and you're thinking as a logical human that hasn't been through those things, mm-hmm. you wouldn't make those decisions. That's when there's a disconnect I feel and people like drop the series. Right. If you can think about, if I went through that, hmm. So put yourself in her shoes. Try to. Which is a hard task at times. If you've read this, you already know, but. Uh, yeah, because I mean, I'm, right now I'm not like particularly, I don't love her, but I don't not like her. You know what I mean? Um, I like Kate, her friend. He's, Cause he's he's good. He's like a balance. Right, because he is from the upper echelon. But he doesn't really belong but with he, them. Yeah, he doesn't really get along with his fellow upperclassmen. Venka and, or Neja. And he's been good to her. Mm-hmm. And they had a little break and he brought her to his house. And yeah. 
like and not like just, in a weird romantic no. way as friends hanging out for the break you know gave her good food they went to uh some shops he got her a gift yeah they seen the puppet show going over to trifecta but he doesn't like rub it in like look what i can do for you no to him it's just it's just like whatever whatever i'm just you're my friend and this is something i want to do for you he is like <clears throat> i like him He's like the pure one in the series. I do want to ask. I don't know. And maybe this is just me looking for more. Do you think Kate is gay? Never thought about it, but I don't think so. Okay. I just think he's in his head a lot. Because he's obviously a, you know... A thinker, a critical thinker. Right. Yeah, because he pledged strategy. strategy, which is what he really wanted. I don't know why. Like, I can't tell you why I have that thought. Either way, makes no difference. But I was just thinking, I wonder if he is. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you what made me think that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, I will, but yeah, I like him. I will say... Uh, one thing going forward, I don't know how soon, but the storytelling does get kind of jagged. But I feel like it kind of fits the motif okay. of what's going on. Yeah, it's been pretty flowy right now. It like, I follow easily. Well, you'll be able to follow easy, but it's, like, abrupt. Like, it'll just stop. Like, the scene will not it'll, complete and it'll just no, stop? No, like, you just start hitting scenes. Like oh, okay. So it might actually pick up pace. Uh, parts of it, yes, and then parts of it, like, if you are waiting, something's probably about to happen. Okay. Okay. Which also made the the whole trilogy for me, I read it pretty damn fast. Because once it goes, like, I need to know what's going to happen, or I needed to know what was going to happen, so I just kept going. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to part two because now that they've gotten through the trials and tribulations and they're actually on their tracks of study and we're starting to learn a little more history about the nation, it's plural, <laughs> I'm interested. Because I, th I think this works too because it does have, even if it's not like real history, it's like history yes. of this yes. universe. I don't know. And like... You're getting that because she's a scholar. She meaning the author. The author. Okay. She's a scholar, and like her grandparents were like telling her these historical events, so she was basically kind of like learning about this stuff as she was writing it. Nice. So you're getting kind of like that real like passion behind like that knowledge. Right. Hmm. That makes it even more interesting now. So, hmm. anything else for part one of Poppy War? Mm, that was the nice part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to have like an intermission and go into the not nice part? No, I mean like in the trilogy, <laughs> I think that was the least dark part part one yeah okay so from this point forward what i'm hearing is i need to have a not depressive state of mind <laughs> when i read this possibly because it might tank me into depression i don't remember when stuff happens but i know i remember the end of this book and it's no don't have... no i'm just saying it's pretty yeah okay well, we shall leave it at that if you're okay with that. That's fine. Alrighty, so next time we see you, we'll be discussing part two of, I'm going to say our last name wrong, R.F. Quang's The Poppy War. 